Hello everyone, it's DJ. I'm trying a slightly different format. Let's see how it goes. This week we've got some changes to the post 9-11 GI Bill. Let's find out what they are. Alright guys, I said that there were some changes to the post 9-11 GI Bill. Uh, this came out a couple of months ago, but I only found out about it recently, and I thought this would be beneficial to pass on to all of you. So, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to read this notice to you. Uh, not all of it, just some excerpts, so please forgive me not looking directly at you while I do this. I'm going to look down at the monitor here and read to you. There are some significant changes here to how the post 9-11 GI Bill is going to work. I don't know what you may or may not already know about this particular program, and I'm certainly not uh, an expert in this, but I can at least explain from my own experience and from these changes what's going on and hopefully help you understand it a little better yourself. So here we go. Oh, and when, when it talks about uh, TEB, that is Transfer of Eligibility of Benefits, uh, that is the primary change that's being done here. As I'm sure you know, th one of the significant benefits of the post-9-11 GI Bill is you can pass it on to your spouse or your children. Well, there have always been some rules associated with this, but they were not stringently enforced. The primary point of this notice is there are going to be some significant changes to the rules and they will be enforced. So let's go over what those are right now. So I'm going to start with summary of changes and by the way I will post this in the resources section of this episode for you to see in full if you are so inclined. But for now I'm just going to read a few excerpts and go from there. So, summary of changes, four-year obligation. The requesting soldier, and yes, I'm going to be speaking in Army terms, sorry. The requesting soldier must be able to agree to a four-year service obligation before transfer of benefits will be approved. There are no longer any exceptions to the four-year commitment. And now I'll break off and come back to you here. That was the part that was, you know, of... Uh, that was the part of the rule that was not being enforced so much. It, the rule has always been a four-year service obligation remaining, but there were many exceptions being made to it. For example, retiring or uh, being non-selected for continuation of service by a retention board, things like that. Uh, that is going away. You know, it's going to be a four-year obligation uh, with very few exceptions at all. And I'll just go ahead and cover uh, some more of the details here now. So, an enlisted soldier's expiration term of service, or ETS, or retention control point, we won't worry about that right now, must be four or more years from the transfer of eligibility request date. I think that's pretty obvious, or pretty easy to understand. So you've got to have at least four years left in your eligibility for service before you can do this transfer. If you extend your enlistment in order to have that four-year service obligation, that's fine. But if you're dead set on getting out in less than four years, then you cannot do the transfer. Same for officers. An officer's mandatory removal date must be four or more years from the transfer request date. Again, pretty simple there. Now, here's one that used to be an exception, but is not anymore. Soldiers who are enrolled in the Integrated Disability Evaluation System, IDES, which includes medical evaluation boards and physical evaluation boards, yada, yada, are no longer eligible to apply for transfer of benefits. The soldier must be found fit for duty and be able to commit to a four-year service obligation to be approved for transfer of benefits. And just to summarize the next sentence or two, you know, that used to be an exception, but no longer. So 
If you want to do a transfer of benefits, you need to be found fit for duty and return to uh, drilling status or active status if you're active, active guard. So that will no longer be an exception to the four-year service obligation rule. All right, transfers. This has been a point of confusion for a lot of people, and this clarifies it. Soldiers may transfer to other components, but must remain in an active status, meaning you're drilling, uh, during the entire service obligation period. So, for example, you cannot go to the individual ready reserve and wait out your four years. You have to be in an actively drilling status no matter where you go. Transfer of benefits will be terminated if the soldier transfers to the individual ready reserve, inactive National Guard, or separates from service before completion of the four-year service obligation. Meaning, four years, nothing less, or you can't do the transfer. Again, pretty simple there. Separation boards. Soldiers subject to a separation board must be eligible to meet the service obligation and submit the transfer of eligibility request prior to the convening date of a retention board. Now, every service has its own version of retention boards, so the terms that are used in this memo may not apply to your branch of service. For example, in the Army, they are uh, qualitative service program, qualitative retention boards, selective retention boards, things like that. It might be different in the Navy or the Air Force. But the gist of this is you, know, you have to be eligible to complete four more years. You can't be approaching your mandatory removal date, for example. Uh, you have to have the eligibility of four more years. Uh, previously, a soldier in the separation board process was able to request transfer of benefits even though they were not able to meet the four-year service obligation and their request was held in a pending status until the board made their determination. Translation, you could ask for it before the retention board even if you had less than four years remaining and if you were retained, then they would do the transfer but not anymore. You have to have that eligibility first. All right. And there are a lot of other things here. Probably, well, you know, well, this is based on law, so it's probably applicable to all branches of service. And again, I'm using Army terms, so forgive me there, but I believe you can translate it into your own terminology quite easily. Soldiers serving under any suspension of favorable personnel action, or FLAGS, are not eligible for transfer of benefits. This means if you fail your height and weight, or if you fail your physical fitness test, then you are not eligible to transfer your GI Bill to your family. So, meet the standard. That's all it's saying. Soldiers who voluntarily separate prior to the completing their service obligation will have their transfer of benefits terminated, and both the soldier and dependent may be subject to recoupment from the Department of Veterans Affairs. That's a big change, so keep that in mind. You have to meet that obligation or you're paying the money back. This includes soldiers who choose to retire in lieu of consideration of a separation board. That's another big topic. You know, so keep that in mind. You've, you know, you've got to do this the right way. Otherwise, it's going to backfire. If a soldier fails to complete the service obligation, the transfer of benefits will be terminated and benefits paid to dependents may be subject to recoupment. Well, in fact, it says subject to recoupment from both the soldier and the dependent. There are some exceptions, like the death of a soldier, uh, discharge for a pre-existing medical condition which was not service-related, discharge or release for a hardship, in this case being Army, it's subject to Army Regulation 135-178. I'm not going to go into those uh, in this episode. Discharge or release for a physical or mental condition not characterized as a disability and not due to the soldier's own willful misconduct. 
All right. One, more, two more uh, exceptions to this rule: discharge or release for a disability, or involuntary discharge or release through a force shaping or reduction in force initiative. All right. So those are the only exceptions to these new rules. Like I said, I'm going to post this in the resources section so you can read it yourself. I think it's pretty straightforward, but if you do have any questions, you know, you know, have no qualms about firing them over to me. If I'm not able to answer the, the questions myself, I know who can, and I'll dig up the answers for you. So, really, that's it. That's the short and sweet of this episode. There are changes to the GI Bill, and you need to be aware of them in order to do things correctly. See, we don't just do benefits after you leave. It's very often stuff that affects you while you're still in service. That's the whole point. You've got to have time to make use of your benefits. All right. So that's all for this week. If you are so inclined, you know, then uh, you know, be sure to hit that little subscribe button down there on the lower screen. If you're listening out there in podcast land, be sure to subscribe to this broadcast as well. And also in podcast land, I would welcome any writing of reviews, of, uh, of opinion of this show. Let people know what you think. Don't forget that there's also a radio program now on 7780 kilohertz. That broadcasts on Sunday afternoons at 1630 Eastern Standard Time. And for you civilians out there, that's 430 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't have a radio, a shortwave radio, then there are some links on the front page of my website, rcretirement.com, where you can find some affordable radios. They're between $20 and $80, pretty cheap, and you can listen to the program there. If you absolutely cannot get a radio, I've also put the episodes up on SoundCloud, and there are four episodes now. Uh, there will be more every week. So I would also welcome any feedback you have about that program as well. So shoot me an email with reception reports. Let me know how it sounds. You know, let me know if the you know, broadcast was coming into your radio broken up or if it was loud and clear. You know, that would be nice to know. That frequency is supposed to be able to be picked up all across the northern uh, America, North American continent. So hopefully you won't have any issues there. All right, so that is all for this week. I do thank you for being part of this audience and for putting us over the 100 member mark by this point. That's most appreciated. Let's grow it uh, even more. I would like to not only be in the triple digits, but to get up into the four, five, and six digit marks by some point in my lifetime. And I believe that is entirely possible with your help. So again, thank you for being with me and join me next week. Have a great day. If you liked what you heard on today's episode, then please go below and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then please have no qualms about posting them in the comment section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RC Retirement website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for entertainment and informational purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel, accountant, or financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.